All right, uh, let's try to write the epsilon n proof for the following statement. Uh, if the sequence a n converges to a and the sequence b n converges to b, then sequence a n times b n converges to a times b. All right, so let's write down its definition. Uh, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists capital N, which is a natural number, such that as long as N is greater than capital N, we can make sure that the absolute value of uh, A N times B N minus A B is less than epsilon. Right? So let's fill in some details so that the, we can establish the existence of such capital N. Right? So first, I'm going to erase this uh, uh, less than epsilon part because we haven't uh, really established that yet. Right? So we erase that. And also, I'm going to make a copy of this and uh, give a little bit of extra room so that uh, we can add a couple of terms here. Right? So we make a copy. Right? Then we uh, leave a little bit of room. Right? So here's a trick. I'm going to subtract a n times b and add a n plus b which looks like this. All right, since I'm subtracting and adding the same thing, uh, we're not really changing anything, so we have a, we still have the equality here. All right? Then I'm going to use the triangle inequality to split this into the first two and the last two terms. All right? So we have, uh, since that a n is in common, so I pull it out, then you have a b n minus b. Right? Here, last two, b is in common, so I pull it out. You have a n minus a here, right? So we are trying to control uh, uh, absolute value of a n and the absolute value of b n minus b and the absolute value of a n minus a, right? Since we know that, uh, you know, a n, the sequence a n converges to a, uh, we can say the following. We know that uh, there exists capital N1, such that as long as N is greater than capital N1, we can make sure that the absolute value of A N is less than absolute value of A plus 1. Right? So we can say that because the sequence A N converges to A. Right? And the sequence B N converges to B, uh, we can say the following. We know that the there exists capital N2, uh, which is a natural number. As long as N is greater than capital N2, we can make sure that the absolute value of BN minus B is less than epsilon over 2 over absolute value of A plus 1. So it could be any positive number, so we chose that, and you can conveniently cancel those. Right? Uh, since AN still converges to A, we can also say there exists capital N3, uh, which is a natural number. As long as uh, N is greater than capital N3, uh, we can make sure that the absolute value of AN minus A is less than epsilon over 2 over absolute value of B plus 1. Right? So in order to be able to use all three uh, inequalities, we have to make sure that the common capital N has to be the largest of the three. So we can say uh, there exists capital N, which is the maximum of N1, N2, and N3, right? Uh, which is a natural number, obviously, such that uh, as long as N is greater than uh, capital N, we can make sure that uh, here, Right, so we can replace a n using the first uh, inequality. We can replace this guy using the second inequality, and we can replace this guy by the third inequality. So we're going to get this. This is going to be less than the following expression. Right, so here you replace a n by absolute value of a plus one, and the, this guy is replaced by this. Right, then you can cancel those. Right, uh, this guy is replaced by that, the, using the third inequality. 
and then I actually replace the absolute value of B by absolute value of B plus 1 so that they cancel out nicely. And also, I'm making it larger so there's no problem because this is just inequality here. All right, by canceling those guys, what's left is epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, which is obviously epsilon. All right, so therefore, for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists capital N, which is the largest of these three guys, which is a natural number, such that as long as N is larger than this capital N, we can make sure that the absolute value of An times Bn minus Ab is less than epsilon, right? Therefore, we know that the sequence An times Bn converges to A times B. All right, that's it. I hope that uh, this was clear.